It's I'd trade my firstborn child vibes. Oh wow. You know those bread videos? That's a huge call, but it is mm. great bread. Mm. Our trip along the Silk Road has taken us to Changye in China's Gansu province. This area was such a surprise with jaw-dropping scenery and really warm hospitality. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the cool stuff we did like staying in a yurt and these amazing geological formations, as well as some unique local yuga dishes from this region like fish noodles and Mongolian wild onion. There will be a little bit more scenery in this video than some of my others because honestly it was just too cool to leave out. So stay tuned until the end to catch the most delicious flaky pancake at the night markets in Zhangye City. When we first arrived about an hour west of Zhangye, we checked into our yurt accommodation. This place was stunning and truly one of the coolest guest house experiences I've ever had. It was really affordable and the hosts helped us arrange everything from sightseeing to dinners just using translation apps. When I say affordable, I mean like 40 Australian dollars a night. The location was also incredible, really close to the colourful Danshia Geo Park and a small restaurant strip. After settling in, we headed out for some lunch to try some fish noodles. These noodles are a Uyghur or yellow Uyghur specialty dish. Most of China's Uyghur population resides in Xinjiang province, but there is a little known community here in Gansu, and these fish noodles are a popular local specialty. Despite the name, they don't actually contain any fish, it's just due to the shape of the wheat noodles that look like little fish. They're really comforting and healthy with lots of vegetables and a light tomatoey sauce that's been kissed with the smoky breath of the wok. The restaurant is one of few facing the street that is still open here at the moment. The reality of it is that tourism just hasn't picked up to previous levels. Like this is a whole resort town with an eating street and hotels and it's just all completely closed except for a few restaurants that line the main street. It's pretty fascinating actually. The next day we headed into colourful Danxia Geo Park and truly had our minds blown. Just look at the beautiful natural variation in colours of the stones. This is an entire city section of the state. I mean, the whole province is like this, but um, you can see so many incredible natural wonders here. This is just the tip of the iceberg. So all of these lines in the rocks are different mineral deposits and they were formed during the Cretaceous period. They actually also have used them to study climate effects in the Cretaceous period because the layers changed based on the climate activity at the time. The coolest thing is that even somewhere like here you can get some pretty decent food to eat uh, and we're just going to get some lunch. So. They have been spruiking Rojamor and, oh wow, <laughs> oh, noodles. I ordered a serve of cold Liangfen noodles, which were the perfect lunch after working up a sweat sightseeing. The cold chewy starch noodles were loaded up with garlic water, this horseradish sauce and plenty of chili oil. We also got a couple of cumin lamb skewers, which were really nice and smoky from the charcoal grill. Here you go. <laughs> oh my god, yes. Yum, yum, yum. Mmm. Oh my god, yum. That's so good. Mmm, super spicy. Salty chili fragrance. The cold noodles had a few pieces of gluten in them as well, which had a chewy, spongy texture that soaks up all the sauce. <laughs> I'm just gonna hold, hold this. Fun. Spiciness is destroying mm. my lips, but <laughs> apart from that, it's good. Yeah. Really cold, really chewy. Very refreshing. And like a little bit, mm, a little bit of a like horseradish mustard. Yeah. Good combo. Hot skewer, cold noodle. It's still food from a tourist site, but the view really makes it worth stopping for a bite to eat. After our meal, we hung around until the afternoon because our yurt host said that this is the best time to visit the park as the sunset intensifies the colors in the rocks. We almost didn't bother, but actually it was really worth the wait.
that night we headed to another local restaurant on the strip for a feast. Look at this, look at that. how our um, lamb ribs came served on a shovel. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Yeah, it's a shovel. Yeah, it's a shovel. Yeah. But I don't think it's a functioning shovel. I think it's designed as a plate. Along with the cumin lamb ribs, we ordered some braised cabbage and a plate of these Mongolian wild onions. This is such a fun and unique vegetable that you can only find in northern China or Mongolia. What does this taste like? I mean, it tastes like the stalk of a, a flower or something, but yeah, okay. It does taste a little bit like snow peas. Like garlic, like chivey snow peas. Mm. Yeah, I think. Really nice with a bit of garlic in there and some chili. Now onto these big fat cumin lamb ribs. These ones really speak for themselves. Okay, massive, massive lamb rib from the shovel. Oh. Wow. So tender. <laughs> so nice and soft cooked with a little cumin and chili. Mm. Also have cabbage. Mm. Just nice light stir fried cabbage. Just get a bit of pepper in, you know? Oh, that's good. Oh my God. It's like wok hay, super savory. So if you want peppercorn, like floraliness. And some soy is really, really good. Mm. <laughs> Sometimes the, the simple cabbage dishes are the best. Anyway, there's our cabbage dish. I think I know which dish Rob liked the best. What's that? <laughs> After leaving the yurt, we headed to Jiangye City so we could see some other sites across the region like China's Grand Canyon. It is named after the American location, and I'll give you one guess why. Walking into the canyon was such a cool experience. I haven't visited the Grand Canyon in America, so I don't have anything to compare it to, but this was so dreamy. Getting out was a bit less cute, though, because we had to climb out some pretty tight passages and up a few really high ladders. There are stairs heading down, and if you do get too overwhelmed, you can go back. But like many Chinese tourist attractions, it's a one-way route, and going back is discouraged. It is actually also discouraged to enter the canyon if you're not fit and able-bodied, and after making the exit, I can see why. That said, I do have a pretty average fitness level and I didn't find it too challenging. While we were staying in Jiangya City, we also visited the Mati Temple. We weren't allowed to film inside, but there is some really interesting Buddhist art preserved here inside the grottos. It tells the story of how Buddhism was brought to China from India across the Silk Road and has blended with other religions along the way to form its own unique offering. This was a really beautiful and peaceful place to visit with a view of the Chilean mountains. To finish off our day trip, we did a little hike up the top of this peak, up a lot of stairs, and enjoyed this panoramic view. It really was worth it. The last stop in Jiangye City was a bustling Mingqing street night market. This adjoining park was absolutely stunning at night. And if there's one thing China does well, it's creating beautiful public spaces for families and locals to enjoy at all hours. And they really do enjoy them. When we arrived at the market, we stopped for a bottle of this sweet fermented drink. It was super refreshing, a little sweet and a little alcoholic. Next up, Rob ordered a bowl of these spicy mala potato starch noodles, which is super slippery and chewy. Well, I away. Yeah. <laughs> oh la la. Chewy noodles with chili oil, sesame paste, garlic water. What do you reckon? Then I spotted this flaky grilled flatbread and I could not pass it up. It was covered in this salty fermented bean paste spread, spring onions and sesame seeds. Every layer was so chewy and delightful. It's such a simple dish, but I just can't pass up a good flatbread. It's so rough watching this back now. I just want to eat it again. I sat down to taste test and got interrupted by a local who had one too many by Joe's. <laughs> uh, Oh, it's a very long way. <laughs> this is so good. You have to try it. It's so, so good. It's like, it's got like a bean paste on the outside spread. It's really savory and chewy and flaky. You know, just be a good 
fresh big pancake energy. It's very savoury. Mmm, delicious. Last up for the night were these cumin chili fish cakes, grilled up with some potato and little hot dogs. You can judge me if you want, I don't care. That last one, that last one respectfully was like trashy Chinese kid food <laughs> with like rice cakes, hot dogs and fish cakes covered in like a cumin lamb, no, not lamb, a cumin chili. It's like, it is something you would eat drunk, it's, but it's so delicious, it's so good. Just enjoy it, embrace it. I'll leave you on that note because I gotta go home and pack now. But next up, we're off to Dunhuang in the far west of China's Gansu province to check out the real life Gobi Desert. I'll be sampling donkey meat, going for camel rides, and visiting a real life oasis in the desert. So make sure you subscribe and follow along the journey. Ciao for now.